trust myself, but we're gonna hide anyway. I'm having fun. <laughs> yep, engine's still there. We're good. This turbo is, I believe, less than $800. How, how far do you want me to send it? This was originally my dad's in 2003. I rode around on this thing as a little kid. Today is the day. It's finally the day. After a whole handful of build videos on the transmission conversion, it's time to hit the dyno, and I'm super pumped because this is way overdue. I'm being completely honest. Uh, I did some prep work for this. I changed the spark plugs to uh br uh, br7 ef this is what we put in there and found that we uh yeah we did that in the last pass we made it yellow belly before like as the transmission was dying i felt it breaking up i don't know if you saw that video um i kind of said something about it i was like i felt like it was breaking up and then afterwards i realized we never changed the spark plugs it's kind of like a rookie mistake these are stock spark plugs so i changed those and now I'm just getting the ATF topped off. And for your own information, the 4L60 dipstick does work in here, but I dropped the pan with the dipstick in here so I could scribe where the top of the pan rail was on it. You could see I, I put a mark on it right there. So I know where the true pan level is, uh, just, to, just to be sure. We have a different tube, but the same dipstick. I still have to put the rest of the fluid in, you know, top it off, make sure it's all good. And Super Tuner Tanner has to do the segment swap for the ECU to be compatible with the 4L80. And then we're gonna take it out real quick, go put some 93 in it and pop it on the dyno. So let's get to it. And real quick too, I don't know if you guys saw, but Uncle Rob shirts on the website, stapledinautoworks.com. I'm actually gonna do something here pretty cool. The first eight people to order an Uncle Rob shirt and a hoodie, a flag hoodie, they'll get a spark plug. One of the old ones from Uncle Rob. And if you're one of those eight people, there's a probability that you will get one of the melted ones. So stapletonautoworks.com, link in the description, check it out. So what is it that you have to do after you do all the mechanical stuff for the 480 conversion computer wise? We gotta do a segment swap. What is which, that? Which tells the OS of the computer that, hey, this isn't this transmission anymore, it's a better transmission. and that way all the wires are commanding to the right solenoid so it shifts right because right now it defaults into third and can't do anything so to clarify if you just bolt up your 4l80 and do all the wiring repaint and everything that we did on here in previous episodes which you should go watch if you haven't seen them if you do all that without this part you will be stuck in third gear yeah which is no fun so the segment swap is done um we backed it out of the corner over there and you know I'm just gonna take it to the old gas station real quick and put some 93 in here because uh, we had some ignite in it diluting the pump gas before. And this build is for science, so I'm putting 93 in it because you guys aren't gonna put ignite racing ethanol into yours when you do this. So that's the plan. And we're gonna get to see how it goes down the road. You can definitely tell the converter size is not stock. There you go. I am so pumped for this. Like even just driving here, I could feel the transmission actually propels it forward. It doesn't just do it. Just a bunch of dumb stuff like the 4L60 did. It's gonna be so much fun to drive. I can't wait to see how much power it's gonna make. Leave a comment what you think it's gonna make. Now, I did only put seven gallons in here because after this, we're gonna drop the tank and put the Dietchworks uh, fuel pump and stuff in. This is just for science to find out how much power the stock fuel pump can produce with upgraded injectors. That's the whole point of this here. As Uncle Rob is a build for science, and science we will do. Otherwise, I would have just done that all at once. Oh, Dan, you know how badly I want to floor it right now. I just feel it, but can't because we got to make sure everything's good on the dyno first. But I'll make some uh, some noises here just for just for fun. That's just 
just awesome. That's what it's all about right there. Got everything strapped down here. As you can see, it's nice and nice and original. I like that. <laughs> Let, let's see. Uh, there's no rust on the back of the shirt, though. We uh, conveniently left that out. <laughs> Looks prettier on the shirt. It does. Good job, Jacob. <laughs> well, in all reality, if there was rust visible on it from that angle, we would have had the rust on there anyway. Because I don't know if you noticed, but the tow hooks from that my dad had on here from pulling this thing around behind the family motorhome are, are on the shirt. It's like the crunchy beetle. The crunchy beetle. Yeah, I could put my finger through it, but I'm not going to. And it would ruin it. It'd be ruined. Look at them tow hooks, though. Check that out. Details. Yeah, if you're new here, this was originally my dad's in 2003. I rode around on this thing as a little kid, and then he drove that as his daily driver slash work vehicle until 2008 when he sold it to my Uncle Rob. That's where the name comes from. Uncle Rob had this thing from 2008 until October of last year when he sold it to me for a dollar um, when he upgraded to a new, uh, newer Yukon XL Denali. All my freaking uncles drive Suburbans. It's kind of funny. But, yep, that's the story. If you've never heard it before, there it is. You can go on the Uncle Rob playlist and watch every single video up to this point, including the day I got it, where my Uncle Rob actually talks about it, says some stories, and funny stuff like that. So go check that out and hit that subscribe button too if you haven't done that already. If you haven't done it already and you're on the fence, wait till we dyno this thing and see if I earn it. How about that? I don't think the color is too much of a stretch though because look how much brighter it is on the semi-buffed door versus the door that's not been touched. Yeah. It's like, you know, when this thing's out in the sun, it, it really pops. We'll, we'll get it there. It needs a, a full buff and whatnot at some, at some point. He like almost like broke Uncle Rob last time. Oh yeah, funny story about that. We we thought this thing was four by four, and I guess it is, but it's not. Like we pretty much dynoed this thing, holding the front wheels to the ground, unknowing that they were trying to move. Yeah. And it still made 370 at the back tire <laughs> like that. Basically what happens with how the factory transfer case works is it's like an open diff. So if you hold one wheel, the rest of them are gonna move. We were holding the front wheels and the back ones were still going. Which transfer case, why well, wasn't too happy about that. But now it's got a 261 HD transfer case in there from a, a 2003 uh, Silverado 2500 HD gas truck, which is the same exact transfer case that is in the Escalade. I uh, searched for one of those long and hard, that's what she said, because I know that it'll take the power because it's one of those living in the Escalade. You think we want another one of those fans? Uh, not. Okay, because my transmission goalie doesn't have a fan on it. Yeah, I don't have e-fans done on this yet. I have all the stuff to do the factory e-fan conversion. Um, I just need a couple pins, which Actually, uh, Brian, the guy from a few videos ago that helped me out with the gas tank, um, gonna give me, he gave me the fan harness, and somebody else mailed me the fans. So, Uncle Rob is kind of like the people's bill. It's pretty humbling. For now, we just have, you know, power here, ground over there, and you just plug them in and unplug them when you're done with them. And the turbo, this is a Force Performance turbo. It's, uh... It's specifically catered for this application, like a stock 4853. Um, it's gonna love this thing. Force Performance is awesome, and they're right here in Texas too. I'm gonna check this strap here. It's gonna kind of walk around a little bit, center itself. Uh, it's like way. It's like way to that side. By like a little bit. It's gonna be fine tightening. All right, YOLO. Yeah, are they tight? Um, I'll tighten them. That's not going anywhere.
stock injectors, we could only get 350 to 370 out of it. 397. 397.36 and 432 foot pounds of torque at 69 miles an hour. <laughs> nice. Oh, by the way, there's a hidden 69 on the Uncle Rob shirt, but don't tell anyone where it is if you already found it. What did it do? Good, it was Big Rich, so. Big Rich? Yeah. Nice. How many pounds of boost did it hit? I wasn't walking it right. Oh. So we have more room to go. You wanna see how well this turbo works with this application, which is a stock camshaft, by the way. It just has a Pro Torque uh, 3500 stall in it. Look at that. It's like right there. It's just a tabletop. Like it's not like, usually turbos are like, and then come in it. I mean, it's a steady climb. We don't have a lot of timing in it or anything yet. So, I mean, I'm sure I could pick up through the mid-range a lot. I'm pumped. This, this turbo works really well. Like, I'm, he, that, this is exactly what he told me it would do, and it is doing it. Stock motor. I bet we made 360 on, or 460 on this one. Somewhere around there, maybe, hopefully. On this pole? Yeah. Oh, so you did, you did something to I it. I pulled a lot of fuel off. Okay. All right, let's see what it does. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't do it. No, I know you didn't. He used to have a decal on there of a dong, and I think little John probably drew it on there for memories. Oh. I trust myself though. I trust myself, but we're gonna hide anyway. That definitely sounded more powerful. Let's go see what it did. 435. 435, 463. 460 foot pounds of the tire, 435 horsepower. So far. This is a, like a 10, 10 and a half, 11 pounds. 10 and a half, 11 pounds? Yeah. And that's just the wastegate spring. I put a I put the smallest spring in there that came with the wastegate, which I thought was like three pounds, but it turns out that it's actually makes 10. Um, maybe my wastegate priority placement isn't the best. It's probably likely a scenario, but. It's a, a tile, tile wastegate, a 44 millimeter. And it's working really well. It's, my priority is not very good. It's still handling a lower boost level. Um, yeah, and the, you can saw the exhaust was just dumped there. I just dumped it real quick. I'm gonna connect to the, the whole stock axle, or stock cat back. But uh, we're gonna do a test of downpipe versus through the exhaust once the fuel system is all in. We're also gonna test uh, two wheel drive versus four high. So make sure you stay tuned for those. We're doing some science here. This is just part one. How, how far do you want me to send it? This is probably gonna pick up another 40, 50 on this one. I mean, is it in danger of leaning out? No. All right, guys, if you know me and you're familiar with these videos, you will know that I have never, ever done an ad read before because I won't promote something that I don't think is relevant to, like, me in my life personally. And this one actually is. Did you know that two out of three guys will have some sort of form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? And I've been through this myself because my dad is bald. I don't want to look like that. So this is something that I've been researching on familiar with addressing for the last few years the best thing you can do to prevent that is to take action before it ever happens it's not nonsense i'm not going to tell you about an ad for some stupid phone game that i don't play i have personal experience with this type of thing and i tell you that it has helped me keeps offers generic versions of the fda approved medication to keep things affordable so that's always good ships to your door every three months prevention is key it takes four to six months for it to start doing something. No offense to my dad. You know, I think he pulls off the bald look pretty well, but I would rather keep my hair if I can. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash stapleton42 or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com with a slash stapleton42. Check the description and the pinned comment. It will be in there. That's rich, rich. Oh, well. 
you know, I don't want to hurt the motor because I want to race at SCT next weekend. Yeah. We'll probably make this pull maybe one more. Okay. And then make SCT and beat Chase. Well, we got to do the fuel pump before that. Oh, well, we'll definitely beat Chase then. So yeah. We make it 700 or 1E. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why. We're not gonna we're not gonna beat GTR with a stock fuel pump, but we got a whole Detroit's fuel pump that. Yeah, um, will enable us to turn it up and make 700 or so. Uh, streetcar takeover kickoff party in uh, Pacific Junction, Iowa. I-29 Dragway. We will be there and we will have shirts and hats and other stuff. So, what? We're bringing hats? Yeah. Why? We don't have to ship hats. Oh. If someone buys them in person, we don't have to put it in a box. Okay. Yeah, I kind of thought that might be a good idea. I thought we were just doing it like if Box. Maybe if we have any hats left, but there's gonna be a box of something that I can't talk about yet. So <laughs> I don't know, okay? We'll have some hats. That's literally what you said. I'm just going off of what you said, so. Yeah, well, there's your quota of sass for this video. I knew it had to happen sometime. <laughs> That's what that hard. Oh, it is. It's whatever the converter is. It's stout. Pro it Torque knows what they're doing. Yeah. Everything else looks good though. Mm -hmm. Even the little part store fans are keeping up. Yeah. Can't beat it. So these poles are to 6,100 RPM, and there's really no reason to go any higher because it's kind of tapped out. It's you know it's not going anymore. It's flat. But with an aftermarket camshaft, it would it would keep going and it would make more power with less boost because it would flow more air. But that's the subject for a different day. We will do a cam swap in this thing, but under the progression of scientific improvement for video demonstration purposes for you guys for science. Yeah. Like the guy from Breaking Bad, science. Trans only at one seventy. Yeah. Huh. Good. I want to put this thing in four high and launch it. That's gonna scoot. That'd be well into the four seconds zero to sixty range. Yeah. But this thing making that much power. But my frame of reference, I always wanted my Escalade to be as fast as an SRT Jeep. Like this was before Trackhawks existed. So in my mind, I'm just thinking this would be faster than an SRT8 Jeep before Trackhawks existed because this was twenty. 2015 when this was in my frame of reference and man I feel old are we ready for liftoff all right we'll leave you uh, leave this camera up here that was like 12 high AFR so that was leaning it out pretty good 449 468 yeah and that's that's a lot of power for Basically, all we have in here is a yeah. turbo kit that I built yeah, on jack like stands. 6,000 right in there. So, okay. Yeah, it makes peak torque win. Uh, peak torque is 4,000. Wow. So that's right, pretty much right when the right when the converter's coming in. And that's on pump gas. Yeah, 93. So. so we're on 93 octane, a turbo kit that I built on jack stands on the floor. Um, with a turbo and this turbo is I believe less than $800 uh, Mine's actually a pre-production unit, so I don't know but they're for sale now on uh, forceperformance.net I think is the website. So turbo is less than a thousand dollars It's got a good tile wastegate blow-off valve on it boosted boys old intercooler that I traded him a couple mandrel bends for um, That was on his SR 20 and had um, Yeah, had multiple Nissan motors blown up through it, which is cool 
Uh, drive shafts from a local drive shaft place, a 4080 from a junkyard, a good pro torque converter, a uh, CSF radiator transmission cooler. It's a simple, simple combo and it has made 450 at the tire on 10 pounds of boost on pump gas. Did any of what I just explained make any sense to you? Yeah, because we did it together. Damn straight. Mm. <laughs> yep. Yep, we built it. Let's put it on E and make some power and take it to like 20 PSI. Yeah. <laughs> Send this thing to the moon. You know what else I just realized that I kind of forgot about? Why? That means all the stuff we did on the inside of that transmission worked. Yeah. How about I thought that? Of that? Yeah. I was kind of wondering if that was what the smell was at first. <laughs> I didn't know if it was like something else. <laughs> well, it didn't. We did it and I sacrificed half of my thumbnail for good reason and I'm cool with that. Uh, let's go take this thing out on the street and see how fast it feels. All right, Ricky Bobby, you ready for test drive? Yeah. She didn't want to deal with the wideband cable going through the door, so she just climbed in through the window and didn't give me time to turn the GoPro on. No. <laughs> you could have gone through the sunroof. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> that in there because we're going to do some uh, street logging tomorrow but for now we're just going to go make a rip and have some fun easier to think is out of all the Tahoe's, Yukon's, Suburban's, Escalade's, probably millions of them that have come out of that factory, mine is the fastest. That is an honest to fact and it's really freaking cool to look at that building and see all those trains going in and there and coming out of there with frames and parts and stuff. We see them every day. And that freaking teal one is the baddest mofo that's ever rolled out of there. <laughs> Did you hear it peel out? Yeah. <laughs> it actually broke traction. That's awesome. Hope to mess with the shift points a little bit. But, wow. How'd that feel? A lot better. Yeah, that felt like... It actually, actually went somewhere. Yeah. fun. Jeez. <laughs> well guys, we got ourselves a race car here, that's for sure. Ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I'm ridiculous. Got to unplug the fans. <laughs> here. You want to unplug them? Yep, engine's still there. We're good. Yeah, it is. Like 
like really hot. It smells like burnt plastic. <laughs> Can you smell how hot it is? Okay, ice cream. <laughs> Good job. Did good. We did good today. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a freaking win. I am so pumped. So pumped. I hope if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, go leave a thumbs up on the video, leave a comment, say something. I read pretty much every comment. I respond to a ton of them, almost all of them, all the time. You regulars know that. I'm probably the most active guy in the comment section that you will find anywhere that is of this subscriber level, whatever you want to call it. And uh, head over to stapletonautoworks.com. Get yourself a freaking awesome Uncle Rob shirt and yeah. Logan can pack it for you. Freaking sweet. It is freaking sweet. She does all the packing and stuff. So, you know, they're folded nicely. When I used to do it by myself before she lived here, everything looked terrible. And we got every note for every order gets a note card from you and signed by me yeah yeah every single one and if you ordered this week i was out of town so that's why it's taking so long yeah because they're usually like done like almost instantly yeah we, we pretty much usually ship like next day but um she was out of town visiting family also don't forget the first eight people who order an uncle rob shirt and a hoodie get a spark plug from Uncle Rob. And you might get one of the burned ones. No, it's cool. I think it's cool. Check out these spark plugs. One of them is, well, a couple of them, this one's melted to frick. And so is this one. They're all like, I don't know. They're all, they all tell their own story, you know? This one wasn't even screwed in the whole way. I don't know why. Whoever did that must not have had too much going on upstairs. But, yep, first eight people to order an Uncle Rob shirt after this video with a hoodie, because this is all the hoodies we got. I'm trying to move them to uh, get more room on the shelves for other stuff. And we're not ordering any more hoodies this year because like, you know, hoodie season's kind of wrapping up. It's still cold attracts and stuff at night. If you live in the north, you know, you still want a hoodie for springtime because it gets cool all the way up until middle of summer pretty much sometimes. But we got three X hoodies 2x this is all that's left of xl all that's left of small there's no more larges if you are a size large and you're ineligible for the spark plug thing and you really want one um also the hoodies run small so if you're like a large then the xl would fit you yeah more than likely yeah typically they're they're a little bit more fitted than the typical baggy um hoodies because these ones they're like the good good yeah, under armor like style material on your like wrists and like waistband yeah yeah they so, like the wind can't like come through yeah I, guess, I, don't know. I think that's why yeah it doesn't you don't get wind up them they fit they fit good i like them they don't fade i only use the best like quality stuff for my stuff it has this graph flag graphic on the back we also got the final run of the Stapleton Auto Works in the Good Wrench style. Uh, as far as the black shirts go, that's the very last of those. We have some left. All we got is right here. We got a couple mediums and 2X and 3X in those. Making room for the stuff in this box here, which I can't show you yet because we're not ready for it. And we still have like a bazillion Uncle Rob shirts to sell. You might put something funny on there if you're lucky. If your name's cold, you're automatically going to get a suck it. <laughs> There you go, stapletonautoworks.com, link in the description, check it out. Side note, it's Ruger's birthday, and she ordered him a birthday cake for dogs. Yep, it's cute. 